You know, it only takes love is a good song for today. Because it truly does take only love. But why do we always forget that? You know? In order to, I, I find, in order to have the love work in your life, you need to know how the universe works. There's some wonderful books on exactly how the universe works, and one of them is A Course in Miracles. Another is Return to Love. A Course in Miracles tells you exactly how the universe works. It's not a belief system. You read it, and you can either accept it or not accept it. So I sort of read it, and I thought, well, I'd like to give it a try, you know, see if it does work. And I want to talk a little bit today about some of those laws, some of the ways the universe works. Because when you get to the laws and you get to the love, you obtain inner peace. And the goal, according to the Course of Miracles, is this life is about getting to inner peace. And that really is the valuable gift of our human experience. Do you know that we are each individually an idea of God? God came up with an idea. He came up with the idea of Marie Bielefeld. He came up with the idea of Laverne and, and Terry Sajak and Greg and myself. And he came up with this individual idea. And he said, you know what? I'm I'm going to put them in the human experience. Wow. Do you know, it is proven that an idea can never leave its source. So therefore, God can never leave you. Isn't that good to know? And we are born into this physical universe. And each one of us has a very individualized, pre-programmed curriculum that we have to live out. It's amazing that he, he gives us a curriculum and we have to go out into this material world, this universe, and we have to live it out. The universe, according to the Course of Miracles, is self-organizing and self-correcting, just like it is with everything else in the universe. We are always in self-correction and it, it will always organize itself to give us the lessons we're supposed to learn in our journey here. We are here for a reason. And it's not to buy the best new car and the best new house and all of that. That's all fun. But what we really are here for is to learn the lessons of our spiritual path. What's very interesting is the universe, according to the Course of Miracles, is heavily invested in our spiritual growth. So it doesn't matter. It's going to bring us the lessons, and we have choice. We can either not learn, or we can learn from joy, or we can learn from pain. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. So, what you want to do is try to learn your lessons soon. Because sometimes, you ever watch, like if you watch a soap opera, and I don't watch them, but I've been told that if you watch it, this person has the same problem over and over and over again, right? And you go, why don't they just do this? And the problem will be solved. Well, you know what? God's probably sitting there going, boy... I keep giving this lesson and it ain't getting through. <laughs> Boy, you can always notice it in someone else, can't you? Yes. How about looking at our own, our own lesson? You know, five months ago, I was having a time in my life where, I don't know, everything was a betrayal. I was feeling hurt and angry and Everywhere I turned, it was really awful. And I, I just, and you know that feeling? Do you, you ever have that? 
Ever had one of those days? <laughs> Woo. And you don't know what to do with it. You're like upset. Well, I did what I normally do. I went home and withdrew. And during that time, I was watching TV, and there was an interview with Marianne Williamson on her book, A Return to Love. And I went out and got this book, and I read it. And what it is is a compilation of her views on the book, of course, and miracles. And it's, it's just a short version of what it is. And it's very interesting. It, it, the book has changed my life. There's only been two books in my life that have changed my life, and this is one of them. And what the book entails is about the power of love and the power of forgiveness. Now listen, we've heard about that for many, many years. But boy, I tell you, it, this knowledge of this stuff comes in layers. And it says in there, you can either be creating love or you could be creating fear. You, there's no in-between. You're either creating love, and if you're creating fear, you have the the anxiety, the fears, the betrayals, the hurts, the ego, and all of that. In that she says that this world, the material world, love is a radical idea. You know, we don't think about love very much, do we? We get up in the morning, we have breakfast, we go out, we're thinking about, uh, you know, going to work and doing what we need to do and that that coworker that you can't stand is going to be there and oh, I'll just avoid it. You know, all of that stuff. See, the material world is based on fear. And we are here to base our lives on love. See, you know, we go to school and we have to get an A, a B, a C. And if we get a D and an F, we feel inadequate and more afraid than we did before. And then there's the money. You either have a lot of money or you feel inadequate or not good enough. Or if you don't have a college education, some people feel less. Then there's the body image and the dating scene and the whole thing. It's all based on fear. I'm afraid I'm not good enough. In the spiritual world, it's based on love. To give love, to receive love, to forgive and to be forgiven. Many think that a life of God is a life of sacrifice. Have you ever thought that? I remember when I was younger, I did. I think, oh, a lot of rules. I want to do stuff. Well, the irony is that life without God in love is the life of sacrifice, strife, worry, fear, your choice. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. We are more afraid of our light than our darkness because we're in our darkness more than we are in our light, right? In the material world, we try to get a small piece of the pie. In the spiritual world, there's a lot of pies. And there's more than enough. And yet we avoid it. In the Course of Miracles, it says the definition of magic is you tell the universe what you want, and it brings it to you. And the definition of a miracle is when you ask the universe what it wants, and you serve it. So enlightenment is the unlearning of the material world and returning to the love you were born with. Again, to give love, to receive love, to forgive, and to be forgiven. After reading Return to Love, I realized I thought I knew what forgiveness was but I never truly experienced the act of forgiving. See, in this reality, you can have either a grievance or a miracle, but you cannot have both. It's a law. You can have a grievance 
or you can have a miracle. But you cannot have both. The universe is really interesting. It holds in trust all of your dreams, all of your desires, and it waits for you to forgive. It waits for you to operate with an open heart. Because when you operate with a closed heart, you deflect all the miracles, all the abundance, and all of God's will. So I read the book and I said, gee, there's a technique for forgiveness. I read it. I was blown away by it. And then I thought, I'm going to try it. And I have to tell you, it works. When you forgive, there is a chemical change in the body through your thoughts and your emotions then change. And either the person changes, or you just don't care anymore, and your freedom is your emotional inner peace. I've never experienced that chemical change. You know, Greg told me right before I went up here that hydrangea, if you change the chemicals in the soil, the color goes from pink to blue. In forgiveness, you change from fear to love. And when you know this, and when you know the technique, you are in charge of your emotions. It's, it's a changing of perception, and they say a miracle is the changing of the perception from a perception of fear, anger, hurt, bitterness, grievance, to a perception of love, inner peace, abundance, miracles flowing, hey, there's a lot of incentive to go in that direction. I want you to keep in mind two things that this says. I, I keep this in the back of my mind. It says the only thing that can be missing in any situation is what you're not giving. Now, when you're betrayed, I want you to think about that. Ooh. It says, the only thing that can be missing in any situation is what you are not giving. And that is tough when you're in that spot. But remember it. The other thing is, is when you attack in a relationship, you are ending the relationship. If you are in communication, the relationship continues. I want you to remember that again. When you attack, you are ending the relationship. And when you are in communication, you are keeping the relationship going. So what's the technique? What is that technique of forgiveness? When you have a betrayal and you want it to change, you must pray for the person that betrayed you's happiness for 30 days. <laughs> I read that as a That isn't what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> My ego was going, wasn't it? Pray for 30 days for the person's happiness. Ooh. Let me tell you, I, I didn't say this was necessarily easy. I'm just saying that it is, okay? See, our minds are all connected. What you give is what you get. The alchemy of the prayer changes you. This will open your heart again. Because if you stay with that closed heart, remember, you're deflecting the miracles. The universe holds in trust for you all the things you want. You know, I didn't know if I was going to share this, but I, about a year and a half ago, I, first of all, i got to tell you, I pride myself on exercising three times a week, eating right, and taking care of my body. And I'd go to the doctor once a year and do the blood work and everything. Everything came out fine. And one day I was walking from my car to inside a mall, and I could barely make it into the mall. 
I had to sit down and collect myself. What is this? Long story short, they found three arteries into my heart with over 90% blockage and they put three stents in. From that moment on, I've been fine. I kept asking God, what, what is this? What, why, why? Now I look back, you may not believe this, but I do. I was living with a closed heart. Don't mess with that, don't mess with that universe. Don't mess with the universe. I represent 12 manufacturers in sales, and I sell for each and every one of them, and we get paid according to a signed contract that on the 21st of the following month after they ship, I get paid. And last November, I was due $14,000 from one of my manufacturers. That's a lot of money. And I was looking for Christmas, and I was ah, get $14,000. November 21st came, and the check didn't arrive. I'm calling the owner of that manufacturer and I'm leaving messages and I'm sending emails and no response, nothing. No callbacks, no, no emails. Two weeks go by, December, nothing. Betrayal, hurt, I was getting angry. Then my ego took over. Woo, hold on to your head. Hello, attorney? <laughs> This is what I need. This is what I got. And my attorney's going, don't worry, we're going to hire a, a collection attorney in Pennsylvania and we're going to get your money. Yeah. I hung up the phone and I thought, gee, I, wait a minute. The only thing that's lacking in any situation is what you're not giving. And when you're betrayed, you need to forgive. Forgive? I need $14,000 for my own cash money. So now I'm, I'm going to do, I'm, I didn't call my attorney back. Every day, every hour, we're going to call this guy Eric. I said, Eric, I forgive you. And I pray for your happiness. And I turn you over to the Holy Spirit. And I would do this every hour. Eric, I forgive you. And I pray for your happiness. And I turn you over to the Holy Spirit. I started to relax. I started to feel a little better. Days went by and I kept doing it. And then I remember, wait a minute. The only thing that's ever lacking, that's ever missing in any situation, is what I'm not giving. I must call Eric. So I waited till the night. And on my cell phone where you say it's restricted, you know, I made it restricted. And I called him at night on his cell phone at home. And he answered. Hello. Eric, this is Jim Cantlin. Silence. Jim, are we through? I said, Eric, no. I don't want to be through, but I need the money. What's going on? He says, oh, I'm having... A terrible cash flow problem, and I don't have the money to pay you. I says, well, I, what can you do? He says, well, I can pay you two thousand a month, or two thousand, excuse me, every few weeks until I pay you off. I want you to know, out of the fourteen thousand dollars, I only have two thousand six hundred eighty-seven dollars left for him to pay me, and that's coming in the next couple weeks. I agreed, but. I got the money. Yes, it didn't get it all in November. But my relationship with him is going on, and we're going to figure out ways to sell a product and not have him be in that situation. Went from fear to love. And I couldn't call him until I forgave him because I would have attacked him. Now, I've got to tell you a quick story. 25 years ago, I sued. I was right in a contract before. And I sued. It took three years, and I hired this attorney that I found in the phone book. Okay? Really good idea. And, then, <laughs> and so anyway, I won. 
I won $10,000. Two weeks later, I got a bill from the attorney for $9,000. <laughs> Who won? Suing doesn't work. You have to open your heart. You have to get back to the love. When you have a betrayal, I invite you to try this. It takes you back to the path of spirituality. Find your path and don't mess with the universe. How many here have taken off in a jet and when you get through the clouds, you, it's incredible. You see this beautiful blue sky and the sun's shining. It's just gorgeous. Has anyone ever experienced that? Isn't that phenomenal? You know, the sky is always blue. The sun is always shining. It's the filter of the clouds that keeps you from seeing it. In our lives, it is the fear that keeps us from what's inside that God put there for us to find through our life lessons. God's will is the undeliable file that the universe is holding for you when your heart is open. You know, Michelangelo, the great sculptor, he used to say that God made the most incredible sculpture you would ever imagine, and it was his job to remove the excess marble. Our real job here is to take this human experience, find the love inside, and operate from it, and remove the excess ego, fear, hurt, grievances, to live in the inner peace with God's gifts and the abundance of this universe. Last week I was driving on the east side and I was behind this SUV and the bumper sticker read, many wait till the 11th hour to seek God only to die at 10.30. <laughs> I thought, what? Wow, well, that's pretty good. I invite you to seek the truths now. That's what we're here for. It's very challenging to incorporate these truths into your life, but when you do, it does work. I thank you, and I leave you with a lot more open of a heart and more inner peace. Thanks.